You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Jordan Peterson, you up the bat. Bah! Tell me I hate the fucking go. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Focus on you in 2022. Focus on you in 2022, man. We back with another reaction, man. If you new here, man, I'm all about self-love and positivity. I wanted to get into these type of videos because people was asking, like, what do I do to stay motivated? What's all the things that I tap into? This is one of the things that I tap into, like motivational stuff, just listening to, it, especially when I'm working out and stuff like that. So yeah, so I was like, you know, why not give it a shot? If it's other videos y'all want me to check out, or other motivational people or whatever, shoot them to me on my Instagram or whatever. You know, DM me or something. But yeah, so we got Jordan Peterson. This is the first habits you need to improve your life. Now, I was like, that'd be a good video. Why? Because what are the first habits that, what are the first things we can do to implement, to see change in our life or bring forth the change that we want to see? So I was like, why not, you know, tap into that. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. Often you talk about one way to find meaning is in the journey between who you are and who you could be. Mm. But how do you make sure that when deciding like who you could be, that you're not aiming too high? Right. Because then potentially you could be disappointed. Oh, that's so, a good. That's but a how really... do you make sure that it's challenging enough to keep you engaged? On yeah, that? that's a really good question. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's something you encounter practically in a clinical setting all the time. Well, you know, let's say I, I was dealing with a client and. Maybe that was somebody who, say a man, 35 years old, he still lived at home. Um, so he was too dependent. His room mm. is a complete bloody catastrophe. <laughs> and you know, he's living like a bratty 13 year old. And that gets pretty ugly by the time you're 35. Right. You know, and he knew it. And I'm sure his mother knew it. Although obviously she put up with it, which was probably- One thing I like about this dude as he's telling the story how much you get sucked into the story like he gives so many specific details that adds character and layers and emotion to a story that makes you connect with it on a deeper level one thing i like about him super dope uh telling this story probably her mistake at least in part but maybe we decide well you know let's start by cleaning your room right and so as a cognitive behavioral psychologist, you engage in a process called collaborative empiricism. And that's partly to solve the problem that you described is, well, how do we know we set the right goal? Well, it's like, well, go try it. And just watch yourself like you don't know who you are and come back next week and we'll see how you did. And maybe I remember this one client, he came back and he said, you know, I went and got the vacuum cleaner from the closet, which is something I really never done. and I." I put that vacuum cleaner in the doorway of my bedroom, crossways, so it blocked the doorway, <laughs> and then I just walked over it for a whole week. Whoa. You know, like he was completely nonplussed at his own intransigence. <laughs> and look what he did, eh? He was so resentful and so angry that he, instead of vacuuming his damn bedroom <laughs> like he planned, he just stuck the vacuum in his own way and then martyred himself over it every day for a week. Wow. It's like, okay then, we're starting to get somewhere with the whole <laughs> you living at home thing here. And so, well, that was too high a goal for him. And you say, well, how do you know that? It's like, well, he didn't do it, did he? Right. So then what you do practically is you say, well, how about you bring that vacuum cleaner into your room this week and that's your whole assignment. And just watch what happens when you bring it in. Watch the fantasies that flicker in the back of your mind as you live out your resentment at your therapist <laughs> for daring to make you bring that vacuum across the threshold of your bedroom. Mm. And so if people catch those fantasies, whew, that's quite the bloody nightmare and quite the revelation to themselves, I can tell you, because you have to be one angry person to put a vacuum cleaner <laughs> in your doorway and walk over it every day for a week. Right. And so then we'd get somewhere. It's like, okay, now we're getting to the bottom of things, you know, and, but 
maybe the next week he'd come back, well, with the fantasies at hand and rather shocked as a consequence, but the vacuum cleaner was then in his room. <laughs> and so right. he broke the threshold there, you know, and then maybe we'd have to, maybe all he could do was sort out a drawer or half a drawer. Bro, this is so important. People overlooking the fact that he actually got the vacuum past the threshold into the door and like, oh man, that's just something small and minor. But when you break it down and dissect it, how small and minor it was, obviously it was huge. He he had the vacuum cleaner in his doorway and he was completely going around it. So the fact that he got it into his room and then he said like, maybe the next thing we can probably do is let's just, you know, let's just get one drawer in order. People always neglect the small things that they can be doing right now. Little small things that can really shift your mindset and start positive momentum in your way. A lot of people overlook those because they're so small. But when you look at it, how small is it? Something like that. So what you do is, you know, you pick a target that you think is probably reasonable and you can negotiate that with yourself. Mm. What I would do often practically with my clients is I would say, well, we're going to, your life is not going very well and that's why you're here. I mean, that wasn't a pronouncement on my part. And I would ask them, you know, what, what problems they were suffering from, what, what they were suffering from. But I would usually do a, I would say a pragmatic analysis of the generic quality of their life. And it's not that hard to do. You can do this for yourself. It's part of this self-authoring program that I have online. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm miserable and I'm anxious and I'm bitter and I'm angry and I'm stuck in my career and I don't seem to be able to get anywhere and God damn it, life isn't worth living anyways and so half the time I'm suicidal. It's like, okay, okay, you know, we, right? Now we've established the problem domain, right? Right. At least somewhat. And then I would say, well, in, in, hypothetically, you'd rather that some of that wasn't the case, right? So because we right. want to establish a goal, what is it you want? More right. misery or less misery? And usually by the time hmm. people had come to therapy, unless they were mandated to do so, which never works, by the way, wow. they wanted things to be better. That's why they were there. You know, now and then you get someone who was there just to, you know, maybe please someone else or, but I could usually get beyond that because if they were willing to come there, there was at least a part of them that was hoping that there was such a thing as up. Ooh. And then we just walk through their life. It's like, okay, well, let's do a, an assessment. Do you have any friends? And how often do you see them? Well, I have six friends, but I only see them once every six months. You know, one of them every six months. Well, you know, that's pretty low on the friendship hierarchy. So I just file that away as, as a piece of evidence. Do you have an intimate relationship? Are you as educated as your intelligence would mm. indicate might be useful? Um, do you have a job? Do you have a career? Or failing that, a job, right? Because generally people need at least a job and perhaps hopefully a career. Um, how do you regulate your drug and alcohol use? Because that's a major pitfall for people. Absolutely. How do you use your leisure time? How do you take care of yourself mentally and physically? Mm -hmm. Now that's not everything about life, right? Right. But, but if you don't have any of that, well, we have a place to start then, you know, like maybe, maybe you should try to make one friend. Right. You know, and, and there, there, are, there are ways of doing that. So, for example, one of the things that my wife and I used to do when we moved to a new place, which we did fairly often, was we'd pick some local hangout place, restaurant, bar, something like that, and we'd just go there every week. Mm. And until we started to know at least the proprietors, we'd introduce ourselves and we'd make that a routine. And then, you know, you can get to know people. And sometimes with my clients, I would have to, some of them were incredibly not socially skilled, like in ways you can just, you just have no idea. Well, maybe some of you do. How? Well, because I don't mean you specifically, although. That was a good line. He said, well, maybe some of you do. That was a really good line and how he said it was very cool you know what I'm saying it was very smooth people laughed at it but at the same time maybe it's some people in our audience that's listening to them maybe they can relate so also throwing a little relatability in there too like you know maybe this is you and if so this could potentially be something that can help you maybe i do but um but you may you certainly may know people like this um yeah you know, i have one client who was literally so socially anxious he could not use a telephone 
Wow. And so he was just ter- he was absolutely terrified of people. He'd been horribly bullied. He was three quarters deaf. He had obsessive compulsive disorder. He had an intellectual impairment. I mean, this guy had a rough time, man. And he was so terrified of, he could hardly talk to men and women, man. They were so terrifying to him. He just didn't even know literally where to start. Well, sometimes when people are extremely impaired, they don't know anything basic. Right. They have no friends. It's why? Well, they, they introduce themselves like this. What's your name? And then maybe you say it, but they're so preoccupied that they don't hear it. And then they shake hands. So let's shake hands. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. You don't remember the name. Hmm. You're not making eye contact, so you can't see the person's emotional response and then you're afraid and that's why you're looking away and then because you're afraid and you're looking away you don't pick up the social cues about how to initiate conversation even if you bro this do be going down so many different like avenues of breaking it down to the core layer after layer after layer after that's one thing i like about him too like he actually breaks it down and start unpacking certain things and you like dang well that led to that and that led to this and this I like that. How to do that, so then you're awkward, and because you're looking away, you don't listen, and then you can't enter into the flow of conversation, and so we'd practice shaking hands. Right. You know, maybe 20 times till the person could do it and was comfortable with it. And you know, that's how you start at the bottom of things. I mean, the guy had a lot of obstacles standing in his way, and so we had to find, you know, a, a a place to start but we would set those seven goals it's like well you know maybe you could have a friend or two and maybe you could do something that would educate yourself to some degree and maybe we can take some steps towards moving you towards a job with him i started trying to get him a volunteer job which you think would be easy but which is actually practically just so you know it when you're thinking about people struggling at the bottom who are unemployed it's like, why don't they get a volunteer job say to start them in the process it's bloody well harder to get a volunteer job than a real job. You need a police check for most volunteer positions if they deal with personal care wow. because people are so afraid of litigation. And for someone mm. who is basically illiterate and also who has extreme social anxiety, the whole police check thing just, that wasn't just wasn't working. And I sent him to an employment office and they said, well, type up your resume and distribute it. It's like, that's real helpful. He can't type, you know, he's barely literate. He's never used a computer. He doesn't know what a resume is even. It's like, type up your resume and distribute it. Mm. Jesus, how pathetic. <laughs> so, so one of the things you do if you negotiate with yourself is you set a goal and then see if you move towards it. And if you don't, well, maybe it's the wrong goal. Maybe it's too mm. large. Maybe it's too small. Mm. Set a goal and see if you move towards it. Not just be like, oh, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that actually set a goal and see it and see if you move towards it that's that's just even powerful in itself all for you right so now it's not engaging you um maybe you didn't really want to pursue that goal and you're just deluding yourself and you know it's helpful to have someone to talk those things over with but i would say start from the pers if you're not doing what you want to do or what you think you should be doing drop the presumption that you know who you are and start to negotiate your, with yourself like you're a stranger who mm. needs to be enticed forward. Mm. All right, that was Jordan Peterson, The First Habits You Need to Improve Your Life. I like his perspective. I really like his perspective on how to just take like some of the smallest things and add on that. Like maybe you should start a lot smaller than you think maybe you should just do one thing that's different in a day maybe you should just try to change one thing and then from there other things will start trickling in place but like he said set a goal and see if you work towards it one of the things that was super powerful that i just uh recently listened to i forgot where i listened to it at but they were talking about you know motivation is good but once motivation ends then that's where discipline has to step in and that's when discipline takes off. Because yeah, you can be motivated. Oh man, all these things you be watching be getting you so pumped up and stuff like that. Might be motivated a few days, a few weeks. But then after that, your motivation start dying. 
but that's when the discipline comes in that's when you start putting in the work when you didn't want to do it but you know that this is ultimately getting me closer to where i want to be cl closer to my goal so that's when i got to step in and start moving accordingly so um super dope man I, I like jordan peterson i haven't you know dove into different layers of them in other capacities but as far as this one when he when he's talking about uh, bettering people and trying to get you uplifted and trying to actually break down the things that we have in our minds and try to figure out why do we move like this and why we acting like that i definitely think he's great at that but um you already know what you got to do man look self love and positivity if you new here consider subscribing it's your boy laid back man self love and positivity till next time fire squad i got you and you know it hey